A five-year-old girl raped by Muslim migrant boys in America, and the mainstream media's first instinct is to dismiss this story and label local residents racist bigots and Islamophobes. The don't ask, don't tell doctrine on the refugee file is becoming painfully routine. But playing politics over the alleged rape of a five-year-old would at first blush seem unethical and perfectly indefensible. And yet this week, that is exactly what happened. News out of an apartment complex in Twin Falls, Idaho. A five-year-old girl sexually assaulted in a laundry room by two refugee boys as a third boy looked on, filming the attack all along. And an 89-year-old woman, a neighbor who saw suspicious activity and approached the area to become eyewitness to what can only be described as a fearful scene. The young American girl there with her clothes off, drenched in urine as the naked boys towered over her. Immediately, local papers rushed to discredit the story as false claims being spread to incite anti-refugee sentiment, and their narrative bolstered in part by the county prosecutor, who said there had been no Syrians, no knife, and no gang rape. But these are some pretty grave allegations for a five-year-old and an 89-year-old to just pull from thin air. You'd reckon serious journalists would follow up with some specific questions. If not Syrians behind the assault, were other migrant boys involved? If no weapon was used, did some other type of assault take place? If not a gang rape, did even one of these boys rape this young girl? Well, just because the mainstream media was unwilling to follow up doesn't mean we here at The Rebel were about to ignore and downplay the broader allegations at the heart of this story. After one news outlet published the name of the alert 89-year-old who became eyewitness to this alleged incident, I gave that woman, Jolene Payne, a call. Here's her side of the story. He's out there playing with a camera, taking pictures, and I thought, does that kid never see a wash machine or something before? I'll go see what he's taking pictures for. And so when I went out there, there was trouble. And the little girl and the boys were... The boys were being mean to my little girl. Now, when and you opened up the door of the laundry room, what did you see? The boys with no clothes on and little girl. Huh? Did you? Were they touching the little girl? Yeah, I guess so. They were doing enough that nobody wanted to be around her because they even peed on her. How's that sound? How many boys were inside the laundry room? Three, but we only saw caught, only caught the two, but there were three. There were three boys inside and one on the outside. He was a bit bigger boy. What did they look they, like? Where are they from? Well, I could tell you that they look like little. Uh, they look like kids that come overseas from Africa. So, according to her account, there were three naked migrant boys in the laundry room with the naked five-year-old girl who was covered in urine. But one of those boys ran away. And a fourth migrant boy stood outside, filming the attack, which was what drew her to the scene. Miss Payne doesn't know where the boys are from specifically, but confirmed that they were from migrant families. Now, to be sure, according to the U.S. State Department's Refugee Processing Center, Twin Falls, Idaho has received over 300 migrants from Iraq and over 160 Sudanese migrants, while Idaho has received just shy of 60 Syrian migrants since war broke out in that country in 2011. Miss Payne, a former nurse, well, she told me that she had seen a lot in her long life, but nothing like this. Miss Payne also told me that there was no knife involved, but that people might be confused because of another incident in Twin Falls not so long ago, which involved another migrant boy who pulled a knife on another little American girl. There was no knife on, with this at all. This was another, act, another thing that happened. It was one of the girls that are about eight years old, and her mom and her live here, and one of them boys over here that was in on it, the little girl, she took he took a knife out and he just kind of cut her down on her arm. Miss Payne, referred to as Grandma Joe by the neighborhood children, answered all my questions with consistency and confident recollection of the facts. Her story did not sway. There was only one question I had left. Was there any evidence that the five-year-old girl had been raped? Here's what she told me. Some of the initial reports uh, said that the, that the little girl had been raped. 
do you know anything about that? Did the little girl tell you exactly what had happened? Or did no, she tell their mother and told you? Yeah, her her dad and mother told me. And I, I told them, okay, yeah, that's what the they said at the hospital. So the, the, the father and the mother told you that the little five-year-old girl had been raped? Yeah, because they took her to the hospital in the ambulance and she was checked. According to Miss Payne's account, doctors told this little girl's parents that their five-year-old daughter had been raped. According to Islam's holy book, the Quran, a woman's testimony is only worth half that of a man's, and a woman needs four witnesses to prove that a rape occurred. Oftentimes in Muslim countries, rape victims are found to be at fault. But here in North America, we aren't ruled by Sharia law. And despite bleats from the left, there is no rape culture in the West. In America, rapists are charged, tried, and convicted based on evidence and the rule of law. In the wake of the Orlando terrorist attack, political correctness concealed the shooter's Islamist motives and left the gay community totally in the dark. I pray that in the wake of the Idaho attack, political correctness does not obscure real rape culture to leave this little girl re-victimized, but brings her migrant attackers to justice so that they may never re-offend. Like what you just saw? Click here and become a member. Watch full episodes of my show on the hunt at therebel.media.